right, we're back and ready to go, everyone. So, as I said, in this session, SNP founder and CEO, Damien Buster, will be chatting with Amex VP, Stacey Rylands, about how a Brisbane-based fintech is solving a problem for one of the largest multinationals on the planet. And this session will be moderated by Lauren from Startmate. Welcome, everyone. Thank you very much, and thank you to all of you for joining us for this conversation. Um, I had to look up the, the particular fable that the title of this session came from to just sort of understand the context, and it, uh, essentially a lion is stuck in a, in a net, I think, and the mouse that comes along has to <laughs> nibble a hole in the net and, and let the lion out. At least that's what I found on the internet. Um, so I'd love to understand if, from those of you in the room, who are the lions? Hands up. Any lions in the room? No? Okay, <laughs> a couple. <laughs> and how many mice are in the room? And how many elephants are in the room? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, well, thank you again to Stacey and Damien for joining us for this conversation. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into the, um, the collaboration that's emerged between Amex, American Express and SNP. Uh, and we will try to keep to time, but also allow a little bit for audience questions at the end. So if you do have any burning questions for the lion or the mouse, please keep them, uh, keep them in your mind and we'll pass a microphone around at the end. But I'll, I'll head to Stacey first. I would love to understand from your perspective, you know, for the longest time, incumbent businesses, the lions, have been, been feeling threatened by emerging startups just as a general principle. Uh, but for the most savvy companies, of course, collaboration has always been absolutely critical as a way to see, you know, the, the livelihood of the business uh, moving forward as new technology emerges. Uh, how does American Express view startup collaboration generally? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, look, from our perspective, it's, it's, it's critically important when, you know, when I think about a key strategic priority for American Express growing card member acceptance internationally is key for our business. And when you look at the payment landscape, that can't be achieved purely through direct acceptance. Mm -hmm. So the way in which we go about building out, you know, and partnering within the payments ecosystem is essential to how we're going to grow our coverage internationally. Mm -hmm. For example, last year we put on 50,000 uh, new locations and a bunch of marquee accounts came into the Australian network. But in order to scale at the rate that we need to, mm. partnerships such as the likes of SNP mm. are, are critical. And why do you think it is that many of your kind of fellow incumbents struggle to, to see the opportunity that can come through collaboration? What's the cultural value at Amex that, that enables you to do that more easily? Look, I think for us as a business, we just understand that without partnerships, we can't grow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I look at, you know, many of the, um, you know, payment partnerships that we've developed over the, over the years, whether it be Apple and American Express mm -hmm. being within the Apple wallet and back in 2015 and the way that that has skyrocketed or the likes of Square when they've come to the market, mm -hmm. it's, it's basically been instrumental in the growth that we've experienced mm -hmm. as a business. And unless you can think broadly, mm -hmm you'll never achieve mm -hmm. um, the ultimate goals of, you know, mass scale coverage that we're after. Yeah. So it keeps you with the eye on where the ball's going as 100%. opposed to sort of where it is right now, and that's fantastic. Um, and, and possibly more unique than it, than it should be. Uh, Damien, I'd love to kind of wind the clock back a little bit in terms of the pre-American Express relationship. Tell us a little bit more about SNP and where you were at before this opportunity came along. Oh, gee, it's, I, I don't question, know if I want to go that <laughs> far back. Um, <laughs> at least there's a few born. mice in the room that will understand that that's sometimes a painful um, <laughs> journey to go through because you start to think about, oh, God, what did I do wrong as much as what I did right? Mm -hmm. Part of what I think we understood over time was that what you expect to be able to be achieved when you create a business um, is not always possible because a lot of what you want to do is dependent on third parties. And the third parties, who are often the lions, uh, invariably make decisions a lot slower than you're prepared to accept, especially when you're in a, you know, in a startup mode where time is money. Every day that passes that you don't achieve an outcome that can warrant you know, more money coming into the business by way of investment um, is going to potentially shorten your lifespan. So, you get to a point where you say, well, how do I actually shortcut this whole process of needing third-party endorsement and third-party acceptance in order for me to get my product out to what my ultimate customer? Um, and part of what 
we established early on was that even though we had some degree of success at being a, a bill payment option um, as a separate new uh, way of people being able to make a payment for a standard household bill, that wasn't going to necessarily translate into getting critical mass of bill payments. Um, what one big organisation uses to determine a go or no go is different to the next. Um, and, uh, and, and we've learned to accept the lion and understand the lion's uh, shortcomings and their strengths. And, you know, one of the lions in the room is our, our good friend Bipay, who is a, another lion that we have started out thinking that we're going to get, you know, crushed under their heel. Instead, we've actually found that maybe we can work with them better than we can work against them. So this is where I think the SNP journey, essentially, with, without going through the whole detail, we got, went from being a, a company that started out being the sort of agitated disruptor of bill payments to actually being the company that says, well, fintech shouldn't just be about disrupting the status quo for the sake of it. Maybe there's a way of being able to work with the incumbents, work with the traditional providers, work with the traditional infrastructure and just make it better and provide effectively a customer overlay that says, all right, well, all of this is in place. Let's not change that, but let's provide something different. And so our work with American Express has been designed to say, well, we've got a payment infrastructure here like BPay that no other place in the world has. And we would be foolish in hindsight now, we know this, to try and actually work against it because no other country in the world could I go to where I could access 60,000 individual billers in one country. And secondly, we've got this network of cardholders uh, that absolutely love putting every single expense they can on their American Express card. And yet, for some reason, there was a disjoin. So that's where we came in. Fantastic. Uh, Stacey, just back to you, I guess. You articulated before very clearly the goal of American Express to be able to increase the options for um, paying for your customers. Mm -hmm. How does that help you determine which potential partnerships are the right fit and that when, what else did you need to evaluate when you started talking with Damien and SNP? So I think from a value proposition, if we, if we go back to the ultimate goal of making sure that we maximise our coverage and, and our card members can ultimately use their card wherever they want, um, you know, there's a, there was a couple of clear gaps for us in the market. And Had you already identified those gaps? Was this yes. yeah? So there was very no, well yeah. known. Yeah. Um, I guess not dissimilar to Damien's story. Mm -hmm. Also dealing with other lions, who in in certain industries or verticals, or whether it may be government or utilities, as an example, mm -hmm. um, their systems are complex. Yeah. Their infrastructure is complex. Integrating a new payment method is time consuming. And that's not going to enable us to scale quickly mm. in some of the industries that we want to close coverage gaps in. Mm -hmm. So along came SNP. Mm -hmm. um, and from a differentiation perspective and a value prop perspective is immediately solving that mm -hmm. gap. Mm -hmm. So our card members now can pay their, mm -hmm. you know, their utility bills, their, their, their council rates, for example, using SNP but also getting the value that American Express brings to them as a card member. Mm -hmm. So differentiation was was really, really clear from the start. Right. But I think what also made the difference is, um, you know, SNP's willingness to partner. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are a large scale multinational. We do have, um, when it comes to regulatory re requirements and compliance, there's a lot of rigor mm -hmm. that has to be around an American Express to protect our network. Mm -hmm. um, but there was a complete lean in um, from, from SNP mm -hmm. to, do what it took to set the foundations so that we could have an effective partnership. And I guess that, that reflects, I guess, the maturity in the fintech ecosystem over the last, you know, five to seven years. There's been a lot of growth on that side and, and understanding from the fintech as to what's required to have these kinds of partnerships. Damien, for you, no doubt American Express wasn't the first company that you had talked about partnering with. You, you did mention BPay before, um, and maybe there are others that you've come into contact with. What was the experience like uh, in those circumstances and what differentiated the relationship you were able to build with Amex? Yeah, I've, I've, I've thought about how um, American Express um, was able to work with us as much as how we've been able to work with them. And, and I think one thing that everyone who's uh, you know, a small fintech trying to actually, you know, grow scale through partnerships, which I, I, 
I can't advocate enough. It's not easy, but when you find a partner that's actually got an attitude towards um, mutual respect, and I think that's a, a key element that I, I mentioned the other day to Stacey, that you, you often, when you partner with large organisations, it's, it's about the fact that they have less value on your time than you have on theirs and, and you have on your own. So I think one thing that we were very mindful of is we work with, you know, fantastic people, you know, like Nadine and Stacey and all the guys at Amex who actually understood that we needed ac actual progress every time we then left a meeting to make sure that when we spoke next time that we were actually achieving what we were talking about. I don't know if you guys are, are, are sort of familiar with this whole concept of, of finishing a meeting um, having all these action items and only to come back to the next meeting and saying, has anything actually been done? And nothing's been done. And so you actually get into this vortex of, it's sort of like inertia. There's nothing going forward. And so you, you find that you'll, you'll, you'll deal with large organisations and no one knows who's responsible for what, so nothing gets done. Whereas I've got a small team, we basically committed to making this the priority, so everything gets done. And so you're often waiting. And the difference was American Express understood that said that we needed to actually work with these guys to understand their time frames. Um, and if we work with them, they will actually help us. So it was that mutual respect around the value of our time and our input. And that was a big difference. I've worked with large organisations who, who generally, you know, I say that they suffer from a concept I call bureaucratic constipation, which, you know, um, <laughs> It, it, it's an awful way to describe it, but the reality is nothing moves, right? And that's the, you know, for, you know, some of us older gents, you know, we understand that whole principle of constipation, but we don't like it in business and we absolutely do anything we can to get it moving. I'm looking at Peter Cook when I say that, but that, uh, that's, that, that's um, th that wasn't specifically to you, Peter. <laughs> but the... But the idea of actual movement in this industry is... Um, seemingly one side of the equation being fintech and not so much the larger institutions. Mm. And I didn't get that from American Express. I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I think we've all, or those of us in the fintech ecosystem have certainly seen exactly what you're talking about play out. Stacey, for, the te for your team, how was it that it became such an internal priority that enabled everything to move a lot faster? Because I guess what happens is these projects come in and they're a bit, you know, they're additional to whatever whatever else is going on. How did this become such a core priority and what did you have to modify about your approach to work with a company like SNP? Yeah, so I, I would say, you know, we've, we've actually put a lot of um, focus mm -hmm. on how we actually go about creating new partnerships mm -hmm. at American Express. With startup of, and other? Or with startup just, yeah. and other. Um, and so, you know, in the last sort of year or so, we've doubled the size of the team. And specifically that enabled the focus to be there and the specialisation within the team to be able to navigate the likes of a SNP through, you know, how do we get to the end point and stand this up in a relatively short period of time. So it really came down to creating the focus and building the team and that, that in Actual essence... Actual resources. Correct. And <laughs> strategic alignment. Fantastic. Yep. And, and for you, Damien, you know, obviously, as you've alluded to, the, the key here is to be able to move fast and seize the opportunity. But with any partnership of this size and scale, there are things that come along that maybe don't slow the process down, but are additional to everything else that you're trying to move fast to do. How are you able to kind of internally manage the extra requirements that come along with, with creating a partnership well, like this? That's pretty simple. We just said tools down and everything else. Let's make this happen. Okay. I think when you get an opportunity like this as a, you know, we talk about the halo effect of having a partner, um, you know, and, and, and partnering with BPay was the first opportunity for us to actually say, you, you know, no one knows who SNP is. Everyone knows who BPay is. You know, it, it's, it's a bit like, what, you know, I used to hang around with good-looking guys at school dances so that they would think that I was part of that group, right? It's the same thing. When you hang around with BPay, you get, you know, the halo effect, and Amex is, is no different. We're getting this association um, that we probably don't deserve. So as far as we're concerned, we stop everything and say, let's make this happen. The big thing we had, is, as Stacey mentioned, is that an organisation doesn't get the credibility that it, that it has without having a strict adherence to the regulatory frameworks, the compliance requirements, all of the accreditation that we had to go through in order to 
I suppose, establish ourselves as a partner worthy um, for Amex to actually work with. If we weren't doing that, I don't think it would have gone very far. And I think that's something that we were really, uh, uh, you know, it, it was imperative for us to establish that very early on, that we had set up um, a very strict regimen around the way that we manage our payment processes. We had to do it to be uh, accredited as a payer institution member of BPAY. That culture, that um, process flow continues through every payment process that we have in our business. We've maintained that. We were able to take that straight into a BPAY, uh, sorry, into an Amex discussion. That was, I think, critical in us being able to get to a point where we were uh, compliant with what American Express had asked us to do even before they'd asked us to do it. Yeah, that sort of leads to my next question. Has it changed the way you actually think about the business? It sounds like there are parts of the BPAY relationship that did change things moving forward. And how has this relationship then evolved? You're thinking about how you run SNP. Yeah, I think, I think you know, the fin you talk about the fintech industry maturing. I think part of the maturity is that every fintech who wants to be taken seriously now, who wants to be a, a challenger brand, has to have the trust that that the banks have taken a long time to establish. So you have to do things in fast forward. The one thing about fintechs is that we're agile, we can move quickly, we can actually do things without, you know, the whole committee process requiring us to, you know, put our hands up to vote. We're actually in a position where we can actually do stuff faster, but it still has to be done. So I think it's really about the, the idea of fintechs now if they want to be taken seriously, start to get processes in place that are akin to any banking institution. Would that be fair to say? Stacey? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And Stacey, from your perspective, you would have seen many startups kind of trying to partner with American Express. Was there something about what Damien was bringing to the table from that perspective that gave you the signals, you know, opportunity aside, the signals that they were ready to embark on this? Yeah. Or you could have brought them along Probably the curve? Probably to Damien's point around mutual respect, like that, that true willingness to partner. And, you know, I'd like to think that we also have the same intent, like mm. how, we go, how we're now going about scaling yeah. um, SNP and supporting you with, you know, your growth endeavours, as well as obviously our own. Mm. It's, it's just that whole collaborative way in which we've worked and understood each other's mutual, mutual goals and mutual requirements to get to where we... We are now. Yeah. So you, that magical, yeah, mutually it's beneficial. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So Damien, let's talk tactically just for the for the last few minutes that we have. What should a startup keep in mind more specifically when they're thinking about embarking in a partnership like this? Um, um, my marketing manager Leah keeps telling me to repeat in in your head: patience is a virtue. Patience, and, it, and <laughs> I think that sometimes you need to actually understand that as much as you would like people to move faster, you have to understand that there are things that can't be done as quickly as you'd like. I think I've st started to un um, uh, overestimate how long something's going to take because I've often been surprised that it does take longer than you think. It always does, because you think it's that simple. Um, I would say that one thing that you need to do, and I think it's just general, and I don't, I'm not telling anyone here what they don't know already, but. Every single thing that we do as a company has to be about solving a problem. I always say to people who are looking at trying to start a business, you know, we've, we've, it's, it's good and it's bad, I suppose, in that it's, there's some great fintechs and great tech companies coming out now that um, would otherwise not necessarily pass muster, but because we've encouraged this whole entre entrepreneurial startup community, people are wanting to be startup entrepreneurs as a career. And I always say, I don't think that should be your goal. I think your goal should be when you find a problem that needs to be fixed, make that your business, make that your, your goal. Don't actually say, I want to be a startup founder and I'll just find something, I'll build a better mousetrap. I think one thing that you always have to do is solve a problem. One thing that we were able to do with American Express is prove to them, without actually asking them first, that we could actually deliver a service for them that they weren't even asking us to do. So we got to a point where we were sick of going cap in hand to a big partner and saying, will you partner with us? Look what we've got. Um, because you end up waiting for them to make a decision that they don't need to make because as far as they're concerned, they don't actually think they've got a problem. So we ended up 
putting together our business um, independently of anyone else, creating a, a, a product and a service that was utilised by American Express customers, not to its optimum, but it was still being utilised in a way that American Express hadn't seen before. So we were actually able to go back to them and show them we've delivered something that I don't think you realise has enormous value. We were lucky enough to have American Express establish that and then, as Stacey said now, work with us by giving us that optimum environment to grow that volume. And, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm pleased to say that we have as a business, gone from being a great concept and a great product to being actually a great business now, only because we're actually able to get a partner to endorse what we're doing to the point where we, we are now. Um, you know, so much so that someone today just um, paid a bill through SNP with their American Express for almost $900,000 in one transaction with their American Express card. Now that, you know, if you, if you had even said someone would pay anything through a mobile worth $900,000 a couple of years ago, no one would believe you. But to say that they're paying a bill with an American Express card through an app that came out of Brisbane, you know, that's an achievement for us that we're very proud of. And we couldn't have done that without American Express helping us. It's quite a parking ticket. <laughs> it certainly is. Uh, <laughs> it may, it may what may kind be of bills could ever it, get to that? It may be Peter Cook's tax bill, but I'm not sure. <laughs> no. um, I'm, we're almost at time. I do have one more question for Stacey, but I just wanted to see if anyone else in the room had uh, questions of either Damien or Stacey that we can uh, get through quickly. Any hands in the room? Otherwise, I'll just go ahead and close. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, there is one question at the back. Damien, I'm curious, when you started SNP, was your vision always to partner with a big credit card company like Amex? No, not at all. Um, it's a good question. I, I think we wanted to... I think I mentioned I, I really thought that we'd be able to conquer the world on our own. And it, it's, it's, I think the mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs and startup founders think is that they've got such a good product that everyone just will love it. And, and, and when you... And the, sometimes it's almost an impediment to you that you have early success. We had some billers take on SNP as a payment option in its own right, an alternative to BPAY, um, and we thought that the rest would fall like, you know, like dominoes. It didn't happen. And so we didn't think that we'd need anyone else. It, it was only really that we, we worked out that for us to be able to gain that, that momentum, we needed to know that we had support. I always say that if you are trying to establish a customer database on your own and you have no brand equity and no trust, um, it's going to take you a lot longer than if you actually work with someone who already has that and you're effectively piggybacking off their brand and saying, and here's an, an, an additional layer of service. So uh, without speaking for Stacey, Stacey's now in a position whereby American Express can use that brand equity, that brand trust and say, and we as a trusted brand can tell you, you can use SNP safely to pay all your household bills. So it makes a lot of sense to me now, but I didn't think that that was something I'd have to do when we started. Um, and it's these things that, you know, people talk about pivots in business and they talk about the fact that you have to be agile and you have to be flexible. It's, it's absolutely 100% right. I think you've, you know, you've got to have this true vision always, but the way that you go to get there, you have to be prepared to, because things just don't happen the way you want to. And we've been going seven years plus now and it's only really been in the last 12 months that we've actually flipped into, an, into a good business. Um, well, not a good business, we'll say a business. Mm -hmm. Before then, we were just a, a, you know, a, a good tech shop and a startup. True startup, no money. Um, but, uh, <laughs> if I can just have one, well, I'm sorry, Bruce, we can't go to any more audience questions, but I did want to ask Stacey one more before we close. Uh, I guess, what other priorities are you focused on right now for the, for the mice in the room? Uh, how can people actually connect with you to talk about partnering with American Express? So, I mean, for me personally, the, the priority remains the same, which is um, just making sure that we continue to strengthen our card acceptance network and that that is, um, you know, warmly welcoming for, for our card members. So just continuing to involve, evolve the partnership model and focus where we know mm -hmm. our card members want to be able to use the card.
Fantastic. Uh, well, thank you to all of you for, for joining us for this session. I, uh, Stacey and Damien might be around for other conversations. Uh, but yeah, enjoy the rest of Intersect. Thank you. Thank you so much to our panelists. Thanks, Anne.